Ooh, that was 39 million. That was 39 million. <laughs> What's up, guys? War here. Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm bringing you the Rogue Penetrating Shot build. I'm going to have two variants for you because this build is by far not only the best range build, but just super, super fun and satisfying. We're going to be able to do all content, including a couple item swaps to just absolutely demolish the bosses, as you guys seen in the intro. So we're going to break down everything you need for the build, the gear, the Paragon board, and all the juicy insides of that. Should I say that? I don't know. Okay, here we go. Let's break everything down. So there's a lot of different variants when it comes to penetrating shot, and I just want to kind of give my thoughts and changes on it i know a lot of uh, builds are going around with penetrating shot plus rapid fire for bosses but i wanted just a straight pure penetrating shot build so if you're looking for a rapid fire variant i do not have one there's definitely a lot of other great creators out there that do that but mine is going to be a pure penetrating shot build and then we're going to swap over to a couple items which is going to be great for bossing so we have a uh, puncture into fundamental puncture, which is just going to help us make enemies vulnerable, which is super powerful. Then we're going to come down and we're taking penetrating shot into improved penetrating shot. This just gives us more of a crit chance and allow us to do more damage. However, if you do like advanced penetrating shot, this is also really good because we are applying a lot of crowd control. See, so getting a knockdown is actually really nice, but because puncture already slows enemies, I opted for the improved penetrating shot, which just gives us even more crit chance. Then we're doing three ranks into sturdy for DR because rogues are fragile. We got one point into siphoning strikes, which is just really nice. It's a little bit of healing. Then we got stutter step. Critically striking gives us move speed. Now I am going to talk about some skill points that you can adjust. There is going to be a lot of variance to this build. However, the core is going to stay the same. Next, we're taking all of our points into weapon mastery for more damage. And then we're going to be taking dash into methodical dash, which is super strong. Now, I'm opting for shadow step into methodical shadow step here for a stun. However, there is going to be one skill we can swap this out for I'll talk about in a minute. Next, we are going to be taking agile while using a cooldown. Our dodge chances increase. This is actually very important for our build. We're taking one point in mending obscurity. Okay, this is going to give us while stealth we heal, which is fantastic. We are going to be going stealth mode with concealment. Concealment makes us unstoppable, gives us move speed, and we can move freely. This is going to give us stealth for five seconds. This skill is very important for the build. It is, you cannot take it away. We need this, okay? Then we're maxing out exploit for more damage, and we're also maxing out malice for more damage, okay? Then we're going to come down and we're taking Shadow Imbuement here, all right? We're going into Enhanced all the way up into Mixed Shadow Imbuement. Now, you're probably going to be asking, well, why am I not taking Blended in Shadow Imbuement, which makes all enemies vulnerable for two seconds? Well, we already make uh, enemies vulnerable really, really easy with um, Puncture, and then we make them uh, very, very... We make them vulnerable with Exploit Glyph, which we'll talk about once we get to the Paragon board. So I opted for mixed Shadow Imbuement, which just allows enemies affected by Shadow Imbuement just to take more damage from us, which is really nice. However, if you are struggling with um, vulnerability or making enemies vulnerable nonstop, then you can do this. We'll talk about a pet uh, option as well to make them vulnerable, but you can do Blended if you wish. Next, we're taking Frigid Finesse. This is going to give us some more damage against chilled and frozen enemies. I'll talk about that in a second. Then we're taking Intervention. On a lucky hit, we gain back more energy, which is super important. We're taking Adrenaline Rush while moving. We gain back energy regeneration, which is awesome. We're taking Haste for even more increased move speed and then increased attack speed. Then we're taking Impetus, which is going to be great after moving. Our non-basic attacks, which is going to be our penetrating shot, is going to deal increased damage. Then our key passive is going to be Precision for Marksman skills. Once we reach six stacks, which is really, really easy, our next Marksman skill, Core or Ultimate, is a guaranteed crit, and it's going to do increased damage. Now, you can identify this with the bonus crit here. If I throw one more, right? If I throw one more, you see it go to six, and then if I fire Penetrating Shot, it takes all the points away, and you're going to do an increased damage. It's very, very easy to rack this up. Then um, our... Our lucky, lucky uh, key passive here is always going to be combo points. Combo points just allows us to do more damage here. As you can see, I'm penetrating shot combo points. Well, each point that we have, we just deal an increased amount of damage. Super, super strong here, okay? Now, let's get into the gear pieces because there's a lot of options here. Now, 
Uh, actually, one more thing. Um, you can swap out Methodical Shadow Step if you don't like it for Shadow Clone. This is what we will be swapping into in the boss variant. But you can use Shadow Clone for another way to be unstoppable and just have more damage. So you do have that option if you don't like Shadow Step. Now into our gear pieces. Um, this, this build does require a few key uniques, but it does work if you don't have them. So we have Shaco, of course, just best in slot. Um, however, there is some really good options with God Slayer. You can also do a regular helmet with just like cooldown, more DR, max life, etc. But Shaco is very, very strong here. Then we got regular juggernauts this is by far the this is just taking over disobedience i don't know what blizzard was doing but this takes over disobedience super easy right we just ended up we just end up capping right i'm capped right here i want to get 500 more so i'll probably just add another juggernauts that's like 5,000 or more so that way we're capped out at 13.3 because 13.3 is the break point for t100s next of course the bolts will because we do increase damage while unstoppable which we get unstoppable from uh, concealment as well as shadow step so that's really easy we get that damage and more importantly we get the primary resource regain here for um, 50 then i'm doing ghost walkers here um, this is just perfect ghost walkers is my favorite when we're unstoppable not only do we have increased move speed but we can move freely which is very important on a rogue because we're not super tanky we are fragile and we need to be able to move freely and just dodge a bunch of shots uh, next is the brand new Sky Hunter. It's not brand new, but the changes to Sky Hunter are brand new. I opted for this because the first direct damage you deal to an enemy is a guaranteed crit. And then when you consume uh, stacks of precision uh, when casting a skill, that skill gets increased crit and you gain back energy. So when we precision, which is a guaranteed crit, not only are we getting a guaranteed crit, but we're doing increased crit damage and we're getting energy back. Super easy, okay? Next, we're doing the expectant because our casting a basic skill, we're going to rack up and we're going to do more damage. Then we have condemnation, which core skills deal increased damage um, when spending three combo points and your basic skills have a 30% chance to just auto gain these three. So when you're going through and attacking, see how it just instantly gave me three. That's the 30% chance that we have come over here, little allies. So you're not attacking. So this is almost required for the build. It really just help makes the, the gameplay just way smoother. Then we're doing Icy Alchemist, which is awesome. This is going to help our Frigid Finesse. On a lucky hit from Shadow Imbued Skills, there's a chance for it to explode and chill enemies. And then if they were already chilled, they get frozen. This is super, really, really good. This just helps us with more crowd control and just being able to deal more damage. Then we're taking Rapid because we want to attack faster. Uh, with our basic skill, which would be puncture, just to rack up these points and then fire um, a penetrating shot. And then last but not least is edge masters in the amulet. Okay, just for because we're always going to be probably casting um, penetrating shot at full energy, which is just going to give us the maximum amount of damage. Okay, now let's get over to the uh, the um, construct, if you will. A lot of the construct just really doesn't change. It's pretty standard, guys. Pretty much in almost every build, I think. You got Adrenaline for just normal DPS. I'm still leveling these up for the Rogue. Uh, tactical, Duration, and Fortify for more defenses here. Um, it's going to give you increased duration and then even more cooldown for supported skills, which is great. We're always getting a nice little chunk of DPS there. And then Tempest with um, Efficiency for good crit. Frigid for more chill, which is great for Fidget Finesse. And then Safeguard, which is, just gives us more DR. However, if you are struggling with vulnerability, you can always swap in, where is it? Breaking. Breaking from this has a chance to make enemies vulnerable, okay, for two seconds. The chance right now is 40. The next upgrade is 50. If you do max this out, it's like 90% chance that they're vulnerable. So if you want to swap this in for like safeguard um, would be my suggestion. You swap out safeguard for the DR and you put in breaking and it just helps with um, vulnerability if you swap this out if you're okay with your um, defenses like I have max physical and then all my reses are capped which is very important so having enemies just become vulnerable is just super super good right 4 million super strong this build is absolutely insane now let's get off onto the paragon board because I know come over here I know that's what you guys really want to see again the build link to this guys is going to be down in the description below I'm just going to kind of touch on and, and just go over the glyphs that I'm using and then one key mechanic that a member 
of my community during a live stream was pointing out. So we're going to talk about this. Big shout out to him and all the credit goes to him. He changed his name in my chat, so I can't remember what it is, but big shout out to him. You know who you are if you see this video. Uh, so our glyphs are going to be combat for increased crit and regaining energy cost. We have control for all of our CC. This also helps with our chilled and frozen enemies. Then we're doing diminish, which is what I'll talk about in a second. That's the tech. Exploit for vulnerability and more damage. Night Stalker for uh, more damage with our Shadow Imbuement and to reduce the Shadow Imbuement cooldown by four seconds when we enter stealth. So what this means is, is that when we enter concealment, our Shadow Imbuement is going to be reduced by four seconds. So that's why we always pop Shadow Imbuement first, then concealment second. Uh, then in our Paragon board, then we have Ranger, which is just flat um, marksman skill damage, which is that's what all of our skills are doing. We're doing marksman skill damage and we take less damage from them okay i've opted for a little bit more defense here that's why we're going to be capping our reses but now the tech we have diminish okay let me find where it's at nope that's control i think diminish is here okay so diminish on the instinct board okay this is key tech for the build and something i've been trying out and i absolutely love it okay so what diminish does is it, it just increases the it just gives us a bonus to all rare nodes and then we take reduced physical damage from vulnerable enemies so the node is very very good what makes us so good is that we're going for these nodes here we're going for faint and we're also going for uh discerning the reason we're going for these is because we want to do increased damage after dodging an attack so we got 48% increased damage here after dodging and then another 25% here. Okay, we took all corresponding nodes that are going to give us increased damage. I still need to get this one. Increased damage uh, from dodging an attack. If you look on our board, we can actually get it higher because we, we do have it here. This is attack speed. In here, you can get it in your amulet and you can also get it in your pants like I have here for another 30% damage uh, after dodging an attack. So if we go to our stats here, we're going to scroll down. Damage from dodging is 105%. This is insane. We dodge. Dodge is, and being agile is one of the rogue's strengths. So the more that we can dodge and why we have increased dodge chance on a lot of things, like our boots, increased dodge chance, just allows us to trigger that ability more often. Okay. So if I can find where our dodge chance is, chance is, let me see it. We also have an increase of attack speed when dodging, which is very important. Let me see if I can find it, if it's on here. Um, all damage, damage. Dodge chance is 16%. Okay. We can get this much higher, but 16% is actually very, very good. So what we end up doing is you roughly need about 12%, I would say, dodge chance for this to really, really be effective. So all you need it for is for 16 seconds. So within 16 seconds, before this buff goes away, we're going to end up dodging another attack. So this big, huge buff here for increased damage is always going to be active. We're always going to end up dodging an attack that's close, distant, a spell, whatever it is. We're going to end up dodging, and this just makes it... It just, it just makes the build feel super powerful for one. And then it kind of just touches on the fact that like we're a rogue and we just dodge, right? We're very agile. You know, we're not a tanky build like the Barbarian or the Druid, stuff like that, or even Necromancer in that case. So this is a really good tech that a community member brought up to me. So I've been working this in and trying to figure it out. And this is what I've come up with. And I absolutely love it so this is what we're going for we can actually end up getting this if we end up putting all points in our paragon board to this and if we can tag like an extra 30 percent here you know if we're not going to run to bolts or put it in our boots our amulet we can get it in and i think we can get it in our gloves as well maybe we can end up getting over 200 percent increased damage flat after dodging for 16 seconds that is insane so we have our stats here 15 12 and 16k life which is insane now that is the build guys now real quick i don't want the build video to go too long again this is just standard pen shot and this can do all content okay now for bossing we're going to swap in banish lords we're going to swap in beast falls and we're also going to swap in god slayer and then what we're going to be doing is is i'm going to keep the skill tree and the the um paragon board the same 
But all we're going to do is we're going to swap out Shadow Step and we're going to come grab Shadow Clone because we need an ultimate skill to trigger our Beast Falls, okay? So how this works, so the full damage of this boss variant comes from Rob's friend. I think his name is down here. Uh, from M1PY, all credit to him for this variant. Now his is much different because he is going to be running intercom and a lot of other abilities that i'm not running however the basics of the bill rely on banished lords as well as beast falls okay so how this works is you're going to rack up your stacks let me go to a single okay let me go to a single um training dummy for a boss so what you're going to want to do is you want to rack up your stacks here we're going to want to get to 300 overpower you guys saw in the clip in the beginning we want to get this to 300. Okay, so now that we're at 300, the next step is getting six in our um, key passive, right? You want to get all six. Now, the way that this works is we need to make the enemy vulnerable. So we need to be in shadow imbuement. We're going to pop concealment, and then we're going to pop our ultimate. We're going to do the most amount of damage. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this. Pop, boom, boom, bang. That's 14 million right and that's just the basics okay i'm gonna move back so that way you don't hear that awful companion that's just the basics of of how it works okay so when you cast this I'm, i don't even have the max roll here again i have the max roll here but you're going to be boosting and this is just how that works and then we got god slayer right so that's the basics of kind of how this huge overpower works and this is why i say this is a pure penetrating shot variant you do not need rapid fire you do not need rapid fire now if you don't want to go through how this process works by racking up 300 of the stacks for overpower and then getting all of your combo point stacks and then you know getting your six precision stacks and then going one two three shoot that's fine if you don't want to even deal with that you can definitely swap in and take out um, the ultimate and just go to, to rapid fire completely. That is a super strong build and you could definitely do that. However, I like this because the way I have the build is I just swap this out. And this is even without edge masters, right? I still have icy in. I need to bring in another ring. So where when I do make this variant change, I either have to keep this or I need to swap out sky hunter and I just bring in like another bow that's going to have edge master. So if I swapped it, it's all the same abilities and I don't lose anything. So that way I can just boss that way. So those are the changes that I would make for the boss variant. It's incredibly powerful. As you guys seen in a few of the clips, I, you know, I've done 40, 50 million. It's, and that's just the basics. I haven't even touched the grasp of it. I'm not using intercom. I don't have things super max. I'm still using 800 item power gear, but the build is absolutely insane. You can just make three easy swaps or four if you want. And you can just instantly boss, no problem. So guys, this is my penetrating shot build. I know a lot of people have wanted to kind of to kind of see it and they've been asking me about it. Um, I don't want to like go in and just waste a dungeon because you guys are going to grill me in the comments unless I do a T100. But you can do all content with this build. This is the variant, guys. So like the video, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. This is probably the most fun I've had with Rogue since the game launched especially with ranged skills and it's really nice to be able to bring in some of the bow uniques that we basically just haven't been able to use because they've all sucked so yeah guys this is the build comment down below let me know what you guys think don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications and as always stay gaming i'll see you guys in the next one peace